For our next feature, let's send the question author an email to notify them about new answers. Whenever someone submits an answer, let's send the question author an email about it. We can do this with Action Mailer in Rails. An Action Mailer is just like a controller, but this time instead of controlling views, it will control emails. We can generate a new mailer using the generate command, giving it the mailer option. We need a name for our mailer. I'm going to name it main mailer. And we need a list of methods after that for every email you want to send. Let's just give it one method. A good name here is notify question author. The Rails generator generated a bunch of things for me including the main mailer file, which is where I'm going to prepare my mail. I have a view for the main mailer, but most importantly, I have tests here. And so far we haven't been doing tests. So let's do this one right and go ahead and test drive my email. Let's take a look at the files that were generated for me. The first file is under mailers. You'll see a main mailer.rb. This is my default mailer. And the other file that we need is the test associated with this file, which is going to be under test mailers main mailer test.rb. And here you'll see how I'm preparing a mailer object and I am asserting the defaults, which the generator generated for me. This test passes by default. And the way we run the test is using the rake test command. This will run all the tests that I have. But so far, I only have this test. And you can see how the test is actually passing. I have one test and I don't have any failures. So let's go ahead and start implementing our mailer. A good subject for this email would be new answer to your question. Just by doing that, I broke the test. You'll see right there how my test expected the value to be new answer to your question, but instead it got the default value, which is notify question author. Let's fix that. There are a few ways you can change the subject of an email. You can do it here directly, or you can use a language file to change it, which is pretty cool because with the language file, you can define it in English. And then if you want to add internationalization to your app, you can define it in all other languages. To control the subject using a language file, we're going to go find the English language file under the config directory. And you'll see here there's an example for a hello world message. And what we need is a new message for the subject of our email. We define the message using the following hierarchy, the name of the mailer, the name of the mailing method, and then the subject of the email. And we put the value in here. The value we used for the test was new answer to your question. Let's see if this make the test pass. And it did. Let's go ahead and continue our implementation of the email. I'm going to do the sender and receiver next. The receiver of my email should be the author of the question, but my email object doesn't have any reference to a question or an answer yet. So let's give it a reference. I'm going to pass in an answer object to this mailer because I want to notify a question author about a single answer and put the answer right there in the email. Tell them you've got this new answer. Here it is. To test that, I need test data. I need to create a question and an answer so that I can verify the email was sent to the right destination with the right content. Now, there are a few ways to do this in Rails. We can use fixtures to actually create data as in YAML format, or we can just create the question and answer right here before the test. So let's create a question with this email and a test body. And let's create an answer too. 
and let's make sure the new answer is associated with our question by appending it to the question answers. And now we're passing this answer to the mailer. So all we need to do now is change these default values to the values that I should be getting. So the receiver of the email is my question author and the sender of the email should be my answer author. So I expect the to field of the email to be the email of the question author and I expect the from field of the email to be the email for the answer author. This should break the test because, well, we didn't change the code to make that happen yet. I did, however, get a different message than what I was expecting. I'm getting a wrong number of arguments now. And the reason I'm getting this message is because I added an argument here, but my original method does not have that argument yet. So I'm calling the method with the one argument when the expectation is that the method takes no argument. So let's go ahead and give this method an argument. Now, if we rerun the test, the failure message is different. And now I'm getting what I'm expecting. The test is expecting author at question.com as the receiver of the email. And the actual value that exists right now in the code is the default value that was generated for us. So let's go ahead and implement the solution. My receiver is the author of the question. Using the relations that I defined previously on the answer, remember an answer belongs to a question? I can read the question from the answer object directly, just like that. And once I have the question, I can read the email of the author directly on that question. This is the receiver. For the sender, it's just answer.email. Let's see if this satisfies the test. And it did. The last thing we want to implement for this test is the body of the email. And a good idea would be to include the answer in this email. So let's make sure we are including the answer of this email. This will break the test. The runner expected the body of the answer to be in the email output, and it didn't. Let's fix that. In my main mailer, I need to go to the view associated with the main mailer, which is under the views directory. You go to the main mailer directory and you'll see two files in here. One is HTML and one is text. Let's change the text first. Let's keep the greetings and say something like my answer and include the body of the answer here. However, I don't have access to the answer in here because I did not expose it as an instance variable in here. I can only read instance variables in the view that's associated with the email, just like this greeting instance variable. So let's go ahead and expose the answer in its own instance variable. After doing that, I have access to it here. So I can do answer dot body. Let's see if this satisfies the test. And it did.